Okie doke. So now that we have our front view of our orthographic drawing done, it's time for us to tackle the side view and the top view. You don't have to do them in a particular order. I would recommend picking the one that you think would be easiest and going from there. I think we're going to do the top view next just because this looks really similar to something that we've drawn before. Folks, what does that look similar to? Yeah, to me that looks really similar to the two by two Lego that we drew out in full scale for our technical drawing portfolio. So we're gonna know that our end product will look really similar to that actually. Uh, but there are gonna be a couple other things that we're gonna add in. Now, since we're doing this as an orthographic drawing, one tip that I will offer to you is with your pencil, drawing very lightly to give yourself something called guidelines. Now these guidelines are just really light lines and I'm gonna do them as little light dotted lines that extend up from my front view. When we're doing this orthographic drawing, one thing that Mr. Brown and I do want for y'all to do is to line up your drawings. That means that our top view will be stacked directly over top of our front view and our side view will be directly next to it. We use these guidelines to help us because we've already taken some of these measurements. So those guidelines help us transfer those measurements from one view to the next and also help us to make sure that they are lined up. I will end up erasing most of these, so that's why I'm doing them really lightly. Again, I just want something that I can just barely see to help guide my drawing a little bit. So now with that top view, again, what I did when I actually moved my Lego, I was like this for my front view. I just flipped it so that it's standing up so I can look straight down on it. And we are going to draw it exactly like this. And that also will help us. Like I said, we already have the measurements. We already took the measurement for the full length of this. It's going to be the same as the full length of our front view, because we might remember our front view was our X and our Y axis. And our top view is our Y and our Z. Or sorry, our X and our Z. So we already have this measurement. It's going to be 5 eighths of an inch. If you want, you are more than welcome to practice measuring with your caliper again and double checking with the outer jaws of your caliper that from one side to the next is in fact 5 eighths inch. And I'm going to start off just by, again, measuring and writing out my dimensions. I'm going to do it pretty lightly because I know that I might need to erase them uh, moving on a little bit. So full length, we've got that dimension. And now if I want the full width from front to back, again, I can just use those outer jaws of my caliper. And you'll read your caliper. It's also going to be 5 eighths of an inch front to back. Okay, so now as I have those two and I know the general outline of what this is going to be, which by the way, folks, if we were to describe this shape, the general outline of it, what is that going to look like? We're talking rectangle, L shape, circle, star shape. Yeah, it's going to be a square shape. So now that I know those two measurements and I know that general outline shape, I can start drawing it. And I'm, again, going to pay close attention to my guidelines. Since, like I said, I want this to line up with my front view, I know that I want my drawing to start on the same graph paper line that my front view started. You'll notice, though, I do have a couple of graph paper boxes between my two views. I do not want my two views touching because I need to leave room in between them for things like dimensions. So I have a couple of spaces, but the line that my top view starts on is the same line that my front view starts on. 
and my light little guidelines help me to double check that. Now when I measure it out, I measure those 5 eighths of an inch. You will also notice that that 5 eighths of an inch right there lines up with that very light guideline that I drew myself from my front view. So as I draw that line, you'll see that my top view starts on the same line that my front view started on, and it goes out until that guideline that I gave myself. So they start and they stop at the same points on my graph paper. So that's what Mr. Brown and I mean when we say that we want for your views to be lined up with each other. Okay. And that's also why those guidelines are there. Those are to help us double check that our views are aligned. So now I can go ahead and I can continue using my little guidelines, using the measurements that I took. I can continue to measure out and draw with great accuracy. I can draw my top view. Sorry, Legos. Now, you can still see it. Like I said, I drew my guidelines really lightly, but you can still see that right in the middle of my top view, I have another guideline. Do y'all see that right there? That guideline showed me on my front view where my Lego tower went from one height to another height. So this I can see very clearly and even looking down on it, I can kind of see, just by that little shadow, I can see that, hey, this looks like it's at one height, and this looks like it might be at another height. So instead of drawing this as one flat surface, I'm going to draw as a solid line, slash I can measure it out, and should measure it out. So I'm going to draw as a solid line, right down the middle, which was 5 sixteenths of an inch, for those of you who might need that reminder. So I'm going to draw right down the middle that solid line so that anyone who's looking at this drawing can know that, okay, from the front, it will look like an L, and there will be a taller section and a shorter section. From the top, the taller section is going to be over here, and the shorter section is going to be over here. They are two distinct separate sections, but the overall outline looks like a square. So you can see that through these different views, it's starting to help us put together that information. And so that's actually how we're going to leave our top view as soon as we add the dimensions to it. So we had our overall dimensions, which I'm going to scooch this one over here. So I've got the overall height, which we said was 5 eighths of an inch. The overall, or sorry, the overall width of my Lego tower, which was 5 eighths of an inch. The overall length of it, which is also 5 eighths of an inch. And then the length of just the one section, which is 5 sixteenths of an inch. And so in order to keep us from getting confused, I'm going to do this one more time. I'm so sorry. So note that just one of these sections is 5 sixteenths. Like we said for our first drawing, I want to put that 5 sixteenths just by one half of it. But since all the way across is 5 eighths of an inch, I don't just want to have my 5 eighths over here because that might confuse people and make them think that this section is 5 eighths and this one's 5 sixteenths, which that's not the case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my overall measurement a little bit further away and kind of in the middle. So that way I can say that overall it's 5 eighths of an inch across. This particular section, 5 sixteenths of an inch. So with that, we have all of those dimensions, all those measurements, and now we are good to move on to our side view. So from our front view, actually, Let's go back to this. 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip that Lego over onto its side, and that's what we're going to draw next. Now, just like we did for the top view, I am very lightly going to give myself some guidelines. Again, these guidelines will get erased later or they'll get drawn over later, so I don't want to make them super dark. They're just there to kind of help me keep myself on the right track and help make sure that my side view is aligned with my front view. So just like we talked about for our top and our front, we want to make sure that our side view the bottom of our side view drawing is going to be on the same line as the bottom of our front view drawing. So it's going to start on this same line of paper. And the top of our side view drawing is going to go to that same line of our graph paper as the top of our front view. So that will help us keep it all aligned. Again, we're using the same Lego tower and we've already taken some of these measurements. So when it comes to the full height, of our tower, it's still going to be three quarters of an inch. So if I were to take my caliper and I were to measure this again, the full height of this, just excluding the pegs, but the full height of it is three quarters of an inch. I'll also need to know the width of it. So from one side to the other, which again, we actually know this measurement already too, because we measured the width in our top view. But the width of this, if we measured it again, is going to be 5 eighths of an inch. So with those two measurements to start, I'm going to go ahead and start drawing this out. Again, it's going to line up with lines on my graph paper. The bottom line is going to be on the same line as my graph paper as the bottom line of my front view. And when I'm drawing the height of it, it's going to go all the way up to the same line on the graph paper that my front view went up to. Now overall shape outline wise, what general shape am I drawing here? Again, we're excluding those little studs on the Lego. So what general shape am I drawing? It's gonna be a rectangle, exactly. And so knowing that we already have the height and knowing that we already have the width, I can just finish off drawing this rectangle pretty easily. And now just like when we use our guidelines to help with our top view, you can see that the guidelines that we started to help us with our side view, there's still one that goes right across the middle. Now that guideline, again, is showing us that there's one section that's at one length or width and one section that's at another. So using that guideline and the measurements to help me, I'm gonna go ahead and draw that line straight across as a solid line just like that, to show me that there is a clear difference from this section to that section. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double check that I have all of the dimensions that I need. I have the overall height, I have the overall width. I just need to add in the dimension, which if we come back here, it's gonna be 3 eighths of an inch. I just need to add in that dimension of the height of one of those segments. And that, folks, is how you do an orthographic drawing. 
Now I know that this can be super confusing from one <laughs> from different uh, for several different reasons. It can be confusing sometimes to figure out what the top view is, what the front view is, what the side view is. The good news is Mr. Brown and I will tell you what that front view, what that top view, and what that side view will look like. So if you are ever confused, double check in Schoology. We will be including little Lego slideshows that show you and have the labels of what the front view, the top view, and the side view are supposed to be. So that's one thing we can help out with. Another thing that can get really confusing is what all the measurements are and what measurements you can transfer over. If you are ever in doubt, measure it again. It never hurts to grab your caliper and measure this section again. Even if you measured it before, it never hurts to double check that measurement. And we'd rather you measure things several times than for you to guess which measurement or which dimension it was and end up getting it wrong. In the next video, I'll show you some common mistakes that we see. So watch that just to double check before you turn in to make sure you didn't do any of those mistakes.